In this video, I'm going to give you some slide design tips to help you when you're designing your own presentations. Now, a lot of this has science behind it and research behind it, but also a lot of this comes based on my personal experience designing PowerPoint slides in the past. Now, this first one, slide two, is called a timer. Now, there's lots of timers you can download for free off the internet. So let me just show you this example here. I'm going to go to the reading view and I'm going to click to start the timer. This particular one is a 60 second timer. You can get timers for all sorts of durations, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. Now the idea behind a timer, a lot of people use this on say the title slide, or they put it up while people are milling around before the presentation starts to let them know that there's five minutes before the start of the main presentation or however long you've decided to do. Like I say, this one's 60 seconds. You can also use timers within a slide to kind of count down to a particular feature or to demonstrate that you can actually complete a process within 60 seconds or two minutes, or whatever your time period is. Let's go back to the slideshow. This next slide demonstrates what's called the rule of thirds. Now in photography, this is quite a well-known concept. If you divide your image up into three by three, three lots of three squares, the idea of the rule of thirds is that stuff should be roughly two thirds, one third. So my text down here covers two thirds that way and two thirds up. The bird, is in roughly these last two squares here. So two thirds up, one third across. The logo fits in one square at the top there. So this is quite a classic example of the rule of thirds. A lot of people will take an image and just center it directly on the page. That's not as effective as putting the image offset to one side. So consider the rule of thirds as you're working with different images. I've got some other examples down here. So this next one, you can see the microphone is roughly in the right hand third of this slide and the text roughly consumes two thirds of the slide. So again, it's the rule of thirds in action. This next slide also uses the rule of thirds. It's roughly two thirds, one third. Looks a bit like half and half, but I could always move the head across a little bit further if I needed to. The main point of this slide though, is to demonstrate what's called depth of field. You'll see how the background is blurred, but the main object, the lady here, is in focus. That's called depth of field. And again, it helps you to draw the eye to the main object. Here we have another one. So the group head on this coffee machine is the thing that is in focus. The rest of the machine, even though it's right there, is actually out of focus. So this has depth of field applying. And what this is useful for, not only does it help you to focus on the main object, but you can also place text or other objects on top of the blurred sections, and it helps the text stand out as well. And we'll see some examples of this as we go through. Let's move on. This next section is called contrast, shadow, and overlay. And it's all to do with text. So first of all, some general hints on using text. Slides should be kept as simple and uncluttered as possible. You notice the background on this one is just a plain color. It's actually got a very subtle gradient on it, but it's very plain and simple. The text stands out clearly on top of this background. So if you're gonna use graphic images in the background, I'm gonna give you some hints later on as to how you can actually manage those a bit better. But the busier the background, the harder it is to read your text, especially if you're at the back of the room and the projected screen is a long way away. The second thing is you should always use a font size of at least 24 points. Now, when you are printing stuff, like let's say you take a Word document, your regular text there is normally size 11 or 12. So what you need to be thinking about is make it at least double for a PowerPoint slide. You might think that's massive, but when it's actually projected and when you've got an audience and some people are at quite a distance from the screen, believe me, you want larger text on your screen. Too many people cram too much onto their slides the font end up too small and people can't read it. If you can go larger than 24 point, go larger than 24 point. And just to give you an idea here, if you look at the font size for what I'm using here, it's actually size 60. Okay, so I've got three key points on the screen here, size 60. The other point is use a maximum of six points per slide. So here I've got three. Six is a rule of thumb for a maximum number. Now you've got to use your common sense. If you've only got seven points to demonstrate, put seven on a slide. Or if you want to use one slide with four, another slide with three. Some people actually just use one point per slide. Bring it on, talk about it. Move on to the next one, talk about it. Everyone has their own preferences here. But if you try and put 10 points on a slide, nobody remembers 10 points anyway. That sort of level of detail should be placed on a handout and given out afterwards or at the time. On a screen, really all you wanna see is the main key points, the memory joggers, the things that you want people to remember in a couple of weeks time. Let's move on. The next slide demonstrates what's called contrast. So wherever possible, try and use light text on a dark background or dark text on a light background. Now here I've just used black and white and white and black. 
to demonstrate that. But if you've got, say, a dark blue and a yellow, or a dark red and a light gray, it doesn't really matter what the colors are, as long as you can see it clearly on the background that's used. The next slide demonstrates how to use text on top of a graphic or an image. Now this first bit of text is just plain text with no shadow or any other effects. And you can kind of see it okay, but there are ways to enhance this. The next one here uses the shadow tool in the font group here. And already it stands out better than the first one. The next one uses word art. And it's just one of the word art styles there. It's this one here that has plain white text and a thick black shadow. Okay, so where this was like a mid gray shadow, this is a black thick shadow. And it stands out, it's probably the best one there. The last word art example uses a glow. So it's done under text effects here and the glow option here. And what I've done is I've just chosen more glow colors and chosen a black glow. So it starts off black, but it fades out through the grays to white. And that's how you get the glow effect. So probably one of these last two is the best option to choose with this type of background here. But you get a few choices. This was just to show you the sorts of things you can do. Next up, we have a glorious picture of the Gold Coast here with some sample text on top. Now this is just the original image with some plain black text on top. There's no effects on this text. To make it stand out better though, you can either enhance the text or diminish the background. So what I've done with this next slide is I've used one of the color features on the picture to make it go black and white and brighter. And already you can see the text stands out better. So again, for contrast, here's the original and here's the new one. The way this image was enhanced was to go to the picture tools here, format tab, and under color, I've chosen the last option down here. Okay, so the original colors have all been washed out, just says dark green, background color too light. Also what I've done here is I've gone to the corrections and where the original settings were bang in the middle there, I've chosen the one right down here, so the most contrast and the most brightness. And that's kind of made it go black and white, a little bit sketchy, but you can still see what it is, but your text stands out a lot more. If you want to keep the original colors, there's a couple of things you can do. This next example, again, uses the original image, but it's been washed out. Well, when I say washed out, what I've actually done here is I've transposed a full-size rectangle on top of this picture, which is semi-transparent. So the original image is there. If I click on this one here, this is the image that I've transposed on top. And if you go to format here and just take a look at these two settings here. First of all, I've switched off the outline. So there's no border on this rectangle. And then secondly, under shape fill, I've set it to kind of a lightish gray, but more importantly, if you go to more fill colors here, there's a transparency option down the bottom there. So you don't have to have a fully gray box. You can have a semi gray box. And that's what this is, it's roughly 50%. Now when you do that, because the semi gray box is sitting on top of the image, it has the effect of dimming the image a little bit. And therefore your text stands out more. So let me just reduce this a little bit. I'll show you the original again, and then I'll show you this one. So that's the original, and this is the modified one. Now the last option you have is to do the same sort of concept but on the text itself. So the background here is the original image with no enhancements, but what I've put on top of it is a text box and the text box itself has been filled with a semi gray component. Like we did for the picture originally, but this time it's for the text box. So it's almost like you've got a caption box there, but because the image behind that box is now dimmed, the text stands out. But the rest of the image outside the caption box is its original colors. So that's actually a very effective way of contrasting text, whatever sort of background you've got, to make it stand out. This last section is called Cute, Funny and Geeky. Now, if I showed you this picture here, it kind of invokes a happy emotion. Okay, so whenever you see somebody smiling, and also whenever you see someone looking straight at you, straight out of the picture towards you, that draws your attention in, and it kind of makes you feel a bit happy by looking at it. So happy kid, notice the one third, two thirds again. So I've got the rule of thirds in motion, lots of blank space over here, black and white, to contrast your text as well. Funny, I've just found a picture of a monkey here who looks so pleased with himself. It makes me smile every time I see this picture. Notice how also I've put the text in line where possible with the eyes of these people. So on the kid, it was up a bit, but it's in line with the eye line. On the monkey, it's in line with the eyes again. And the next one, geeky. So having things like the monkey or a geeky guy here, it kind of adds a bit of fun and releases some of the tension in what otherwise might be a really boring presentation. Add a few of these things and see what happens. Okay, next up we have emotions and expressions. Now, whenever you see a picture of a person showing a certain sort of emotion, it kind of makes you feel the same. So this next one here is happy. You know, he's a nice, handsome chap, smiling straight at you, good eye contact, and it makes you feel warm and fuzzy, I'm guessing, <laughs> if you're a lady. The next one, excited. You know, he's kind of reaching out, out of the slide there towards you. 
And when you see that, whatever the text is, it kind of just adds that little bit of excitement when you're reading it. The next one, shocked or surprised. Now you might want to put a bit of bad news up here or a bad result or you know talk about something that you need to shock your people into action. A picture like this kind of helps your cause. Next one, again, smiling guy. So there's lots of space on the left-hand side here to put contrasting text, which is good. Now down towards the bottom here, we have a section called looking and pointing. Now if I showed you this here, where do your eyes naturally go? Apart from the pretty lady. Okay, it goes to where that text is. So where she's pointing, that's where your eyes tend to go. Anybody pointing, that tends to happen. Again, she's looking straight at you, straight out of the slide towards you to draw your attention. If I showed you this one here, okay, it's a guy looking up and left. So where do your eyes naturally go? They go towards the text. They go to where he's looking. This guy here, he sat down, very relaxed, but again, he's looking up. So I've put some text up there. Where do your eyes naturally go? Again, towards the text. There's a lady here, kind of holding a blank whiteboard. If you go to the internet, there's loads of pictures like this. Make sure you go to a stock photo site and download one and get the proper license before you start using it. Again, with a blank whiteboard like this, which is actually just a white background, you can put any text on it you like. And again, because she's looking down at the text, where do you look? At the text as well. And then the last slide here, again, another example of somebody looking up and left. So again, I've put the text where she's looking and where do your eyes naturally go? They follow the eye line or they follow where she's looking and you read the same thing. So these are just visual aids to help you draw attention to the things that need drawing attention to. Okay, so just to recap from the top, we start off with a timer. Timers are good because they're kind of a moving object and they set the expectations of people. People know when the timer ends, so it kind of gets them prepared for the end point. We then use the rule of thirds. Okay, divide your picture roughly into nine, so three one way, three the other, and place your main objects into one or two or three of those at a time. Here's an example of that. We then talked about depth of field. That's where you have the main object in focus and then the background blurred. So we looked at the pretty lady. We also looked at the coffee machine, two examples there. We talked about what to do with text. A lot of presentations use text. So there's three simple hints here. We talked about contrast. We talked about adding effects to your text. So it could be a simple shadow or there's a whole variety of word art effects that you can apply there. I'll then take you through a few examples of what to do if you're using text on top of an image. So we've got the original. We talked about making a picture dim. In this case, it was black and white and made really bright so the text stands out. We talked about adding an overlay to the actual image. In effect, that kind of makes the image dimmer and your text stands out. And I talked about adding a caption box using the same effect, the semi-transparent effect. And again, it helps your text stand out for that caption box. We then talked about using people and emotions. So from the happy to the funny to the geeky. And then different emotions again. We've got happy, excited, shocked, smiley, and all of these evoke emotions in people when they're looking at your slide. And then lastly, we talked about looking and pointing. So you look or point to whatever is important, whatever you want your audience to look at. So we had someone pointing, various people looking at various places, and it draws the eye. So they're my tips. And when I'm designing slides for myself or for other clients, these are the kind of things I put into play. I try and keep things as simple as possible. At the end of the day, it's the message that's important. It's not really the design that should be winning the day. Okay, the design is there, the PowerPoint slides are there just to aid you as a presenter to enhance what you're saying or to emphasize the main points that you wanna get across. So I hope that's been useful. Put some of these into practice as quick as you can with some of the content of some of the images that you work with on a daily basis.